Hey guys, I'm Sun. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. What I'm about to tell you might shock you. I think Google is the best search engine to find things. I think Google Docs is an amazing collaborative tool and I think YouTube changed the way people learn on the internet, you know, and, and that's all for the better. So I have to give credit to Google for developing, commercializing and supporting amazing technology. But as we know, Google is also invading our privacy in unprecedented ways. So I often recommend to people not to use Google services, to use DuckDuckGo uh, and, and stuff like that. Now, many of you have been asking in the comments, is there a way to use Google without compromising my privacy? Is there a way to watch videos on YouTube without compromising my privacy? Well, the good news is there is, and that is using the Tor browser. So the Tor browser is a browser that is based on Firefox that implements very strong uh, security and privacy features to make sure that you don't leak your real IP address. And if you don't go about signing in to a website on the Tor browser, well, you're mostly anonymous. And that is achieved by using something called onion routing. Onion routing is a concept, or we could almost call it protocol, where the information is sent from your computer to a series of relays or proxies and then to the destination. So when you go on a website, we'll say you go on Reddit using Tor, what happens is your computer will establish a circuit through the Tor network. That circuit will comprise of three proxies or relays, one being called the entry node and the, the one in the middle is a standard node and the one at the exit is the exit node. That What happens here is your computer will establish a circuit with three of those nodes and each packet that you're sending over Tor will be encrypted using public key cryptography in a way where each of these nodes can only decipher part of that information. Hence, onion. It peels off, each node will peel off one layer of encryption all the way to the end and the exit node will send your information either in clear text or using HTTPS, whatever you were using at the source. What that means is your, you know, your packets, your network information is routed across tree nodes that are usually in different countries and it then exits. So whatever website you're going on, the IP address that it will see is the IP address of the exit node. If ever someone is trying to figure out where that information originated from, well, they're gonna have a hell of a hard time unless they have compromised the entry node and the exit node. And at that point, they can do something called time correlation attacks to see if the traffic is statistically uh, sent by you. <clears throat> so Tor in any way should be considered a bulletproof way of being fully anonymous. There's a whole bunch of problems that I won't go uh, I won't go into that level of detail in this episode, but in the context of anonymizing your identity to go and search stuff on Google, unless you're searching for really dangerous stuff, well, that should be really good, way enough. By the way, if you wanna learn more about onion routing, there's a phenomenal uh, video by Michael Pound uh, on Computer File, and I'll link it up here and in the description I would recommend watching it. It's very insightful. So uh, without further ado, let's go about downloading the Tor browser. So you wanna make sure that you go on torproject.org and then you can download the browser. I'm on uh, Mac, so I'll click here. Now, um, in the best of worlds, we would look at the signatures and compare cryptographically uh, what we've downloaded to make sure that it was really uh, built by the Tor Foundation. Uh, but in, for the purpose of today's episode, we won't go that deep into uh, InfoSec. I'll keep that for future episodes. By the way, if you're into that level of privacy and security, smash that subscribe button and we'll get there. So uh, as you've done that a million times, you wanna drag this into your application folder. And once this is done, we can go about opening Tor. So I'll close this here and Tor browser, boom. So if you're familiar with you know, Firefox, you'll feel at home in Tor. It's essentially the same thing. 
but designed in a way that's more private. If you've seen the episode that I published a while back on how to configure Firefox for privacy, and if you looked at the episodes on how to protect your Firefox from fingerprinting attacks and stuff like that, I'll link those episodes in the description. We've essentially uh, hardened our Firefox setup to be uh, pretty close to what Tor is using, but Tor is using even more uh, custom features to make sure that you know, you're not fingerprintable and that, um, yeah, that you're not leaking your real IP. So uh, click configure to adjust network settings. If you're in a country that censors, blah, 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 blah. If you're connecting from a private network that requires a proxy, blah, blah, blah. So for, for me, I don't need that level of privacy again for the context of today's episode. So I'm just gonna connect. Uh, I really wanna show you guys how to do this. I think that like even my mom could actually pull off, uh, you know, doing requests on Tor. So once this is done, as you can see, this is very similar to Firefox. Uh, you can see here that it resized the window and there's weird gray around. That's not a bug. They do that to make sure that someone cannot fingerprint you using the size of your screen. Uh, so that's a pretty, uh, pretty cool way of mitigating that. Um, the other thing that you wanna know is while we're now using the standard level of security, again, this is an entry uh, episode on Tor, so I won't go about configuring this. The one I'll show you though is if you click on that little button here, that will reset your identity. So what that means is it's establishing a new circuit uh, to make sure that you're not routing your request through the same nodes. So once we're in here, if we go on google.com, well, that is a really safe way of using Google. Obviously, do not sign in. Uh, uh, if you do, you would be blowing your cover unless you're using an anonymous Google account and you can do that uh, it's it, that might be the subject of a future episode. I, I mean, a lot of people do suggest creating an anonymous, an, ooh, an anonymous Google account. Uh, but we'll suppose right now that we're not, you know, signing in. You can go and, and start using Google here, so I can search for myself. I, I, it's kind of a joke as I'm blowing my cover. Actually, this is a bad, bad example. You would never want to search yourself. <sighs> but let's say you're searching for me or whatever. You click here. Well, that's a way of going on my website uh, without you know, your ISP or whoever may be tracking you of knowing that you have an interest in privacy, for instance. By the way, I also have an Onion uh, address. Uh, a future episode will be about setting up hidden services on Tor. It's a great way of having servers that are not discoverable, uh, true clear net. That will be the subject of a future episode. If you wanna learn about how to create your own hidden services, smash that subscribe button and we'll get there. But for the time being, uh, if we go on YouTube, well, as you can see, this is very similar to how you guys are using Firefox right now. I know some of you are already using Tor. You may have skipped by now this episode, but for the people who haven't used Tor, well, look, I can go and watch the video uh, videos on YouTube without disclosing my real IP and without blowing my identity. So if you wanna use Google services that do not require login, so that's like Google Maps, Google Translate, uh, YouTube, well, you can do it using the Tor browser. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this, uh, but I'll mention it again. Using Tor is not illegal, at least not in most countries that I'm aware of. Using Tor does not mean you're a criminal. Uh, using Tor is an amazing way of browsing the web with way more security. It's very similar, although very different than using a VPN. Why it's similar? Well, you're not revealing your true IP address. Why it's different? Uh, because uh, you're going through a circuit of tree nodes, which is routing your traffic all over the world, making it way more anonymous than using a single VPN. The other thing is a VPN, when you're using a specific provider, well, you need credentials to connect to the VPN provider. Therefore, if that VPN provider is logging all of the requests, well, they could correlate them to you because they know who you are. Same thing for a proxy. So the big difference between using Tor over a VPN or a proxy is you're truly anonymous. You don't need an account. Uh, now, again, as a disclaimer, Tor is not a silver bullet. It's not because you're using Tor that you can go about doing whatever the hell you want. You could still be caught and a lot of people have been caught even though they were using Tor. Uh, and I'm not talking about illegal stuff here. I'm talking about whistleblowers and things like that. Um, I think in the future, I'll dedicate a few episodes 
uh, to case studies on how people got caught. I mean, at least that's something that I'm really interested about. Um, yeah, so I hope you found that insightful. Uh, if you're new to the channel, smash the subscribe button and I'll see you soon. Bye.